Well, hey guys, is aluminum bad for you? Should you avoid it? We are gonna get into it in today's video. A lot of people have concerns about the safety of aluminum. They're concerned that we're exposed to maybe too much aluminum or that it could cause things like Alzheimer's disease, certain types of cancers. We're gonna go over the research on the safety of aluminum in today's video. And we're also going to talk about the safety of aluminum containing antiperspirants. What would the upcoming summer months? You may hear a lot of people say, oh, avoid aluminum and antiperspirants perspirants, don't you know it's harmful? Is there any truth to that? Aluminum is a metal. It's the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. It's found combined with other elements like silicon, oxygen, and fluorine. It's found in lakes, streams, drinking water, soil, personal care products, cosmetics, hygiene products, toothpaste, the list goes on and on. It's in the air that we breathe. It's simply impossible to go your life avoiding exposure to aluminum. The average adult ingests an estimated seven to nine milligrams of aluminum per day. While we are exposed to all of this aluminum in our day-to-day -day lives, our body actually doesn't absorb that much of it. And importantly, what it does absorb, it can handle and excrete in our urine. On average, we only absorb about 0.1% of aluminum from the foods and things that we ingest through our gut. Only a very small amount of aluminum is actually absorbed into the body from what you are exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. That includes from the air, from the soil, from drinking water, from foods that you ingest, medications that you take, cosmetics that you put on your skin, antiperspirants that you use under your armpit. It's all very, very low amounts of absorption into the body. What little aluminum is absorbed in an otherwise healthy individual, it can easily be excreted into the urine. Basically Basically, you're going to pee out whatever low amounts of aluminum are absorbed into the body. I think a lot of people hear that a substance or a compound is detected in the body, they automatically assume it's going to be harmful and that's not the case. In reality, so many things are detected in our bloodstream after exposure. It does not equate to causing disease or harm to human health. It's, it's simply the nature of existing in our world. We're exposed to a lot of things and our body systems are equipped with mechanisms to handle these different things. As with everything, it's not the poison, it's the dose. There's a safe amount of aluminum, and then there are unsafe high amounts that could potentially cause harm. It also boils down to the root of exposure. Are we talking about breathing it in from your environment? Are we talking about aluminum in antiperspirants that you're just putting on your skin? Or are we talking about ingesting large quantities? And it also depends on the individual. Are you someone who has an underlying medical problem that could impact how your body handles aluminum. So of course, it's not a universal truth that all aluminum exposures are completely harmless and we'll get into the potential harms in a moment. But by and large, for the general otherwise healthy population, aluminum is not of health concern. There is no uh, toxicity associated with ingesting aluminum in our foods, in our diet, through medications. The risk of toxicity from aluminum is extremely, extremely low. What situations can aluminum cause harm to human health? The first is occupational exposure to high amounts of aluminum dust that are inhaled. This is seen in people who are aluminum welders, who work in aluminum smelting, who are specifically in an industry that handles aluminum dust. Workers in these occupations who are exposed to high amounts of aluminum that are inhaled, they can develop a lung disease called aluminosis. And some studies suggest that occupations exposed to high amounts of aluminum dust particles have lower performance of certain uh, neurologic tests. But again, this is a specific scenario of an occupational exposure to very, very high amounts of aluminum dust. We're not talking about the normal amounts of aluminum in our environment. We're not talking about putting it on our skin and the amounts that are found in personal care or hygiene products. You're not getting to accumulative aluminum toxicity throughout your body from day-to-day -day exposures because your kidneys are filtering it out and you're excreting it through urine. Which brings me to the next situation where aluminum can be very, very harmful. And that is people who have kidney disease and they need dialysis. Their bodies are no longer able to clear out substances. So those substances can accumulate and become toxic. Aluminum also has been utilized as something included in the fluid that is used to dialyze people with kidney disease. So as part of the dialysis fluid, there was aluminum present in, in the fluid. Um, that technicality aside, these patients subsequently 
had too much aluminum in their system, they develop a neurologic problem called encephalopathy. These individuals also can develop bone problems due to the high amounts of aluminum that accumulate as a result of their kidney disease and exposure. Patients with kidney disease who develop encephalopathy from dialysis, they have very characteristic findings on electroencephalogram, otherwise known as an EEG, as well as the pathology in their brain. It's very characteristic to this disease process in specifically patients who have renal disease and are on dialysis who develop too much aluminum in the body. They develop this encephalopathy. It's very unique to the specific situation. They do present with neurologic problems, including evidence of dementia. If the aluminum issue is corrected early enough, the dementia is reversible. We know that the brain and nervous system are very, very sensitive to aluminum, but in otherwise healthy people, we control the amounts of aluminum in our body so it does not negatively impact the brain or central nervous system. The third situation where aluminum can be harmful is when we're talking about putting it on the skin from an aluminum containing antiperspirant because those are the products where the aluminum amount is most high. In those situations, people can develop skin irritation from the high amounts of aluminum. That, that's a possibility. The reason aluminum is included in these products, these antiperspirants, is because it actually helps reduce the output of sweat. And when we're talking about wanting to reduce body odor, sweat is what gets broken down by the bacteria that live under your arm. And that's what leads to body odor. Aluminum salts and antiperspirants help to reduce the amount of sweat that comes out onto the skin surface. Now, a lot of people have worry about this. They say, well, well, isn't the sweat important for detoxifying the body? And, and by using an aluminum containing antiperspirant that reduces the output of sweat, aren't you getting in the way of the body's natural detoxification system? No, the purpose of sweat is not to detoxify the body. The organ systems responsible for detoxification are going to be your liver and your kidneys, not your skin, not your sweat. The purpose of producing sweat is actually to cool the body. It has nothing to do with detoxifying. Sure, low amounts of certain um, metabolites, toxic metabolites may be identified in sweat, but that is not the primary route in which toxins and toxic metabolites are handled. It's going to be through the liver and kidneys. You're probably most familiar with aluminum and antiperspirants, but in dermatology, we actually prescribe high amounts of aluminum to be applied to the skin of the palms and soles of individuals who suffer from hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating. When you make too much sweat, not only does that get broken down by the bacteria on your skin and lead to body odor, like foot odor, but it also can impair your day-to-day -day function. Like for example, it can impair your ability to grip onto things if your hands are constantly covered in sweat. Uh, for the feet, it can make you put you at risk for foot fungus. So it really can impact someone's day-to-day -day life above and beyond simply body odor, which by itself bothers patients and their quality of life. So there are multiple reasons to treat excessive sweating. Topical aluminum salts not only can be incredibly effective for addressing these issues, but they have a long-standing track record of safety and efficacy for these conditions, with the main adverse effect being irritation of the skin. Some people can develop little skin reactions to aluminum salts. This is pretty rare, but but by and large, aluminum salts and antiperspirants are very, very safe. Now let's talk about Alzheimer's disease because a lot of people who are worried about aluminum, they're worried about it because they have heard that uh, aluminum is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. It's actually not. The association between aluminum and Alzheimer's disease is not well established. There's no solid proof that aluminum is responsible for Alzheimer's disease. Now, when we're talking about patients who have renal disease, as I mentioned earlier, who are on dialysis and develop encephalopathy and a dementia, um, they have characteristic changes in their EEG and certain changes in their brain. But those changes are not seen in Alzheimer's disease whatsoever. So the, the dementia that happens to patients with kidney disease on dialysis from who end up with too much aluminum in their system, that dementia is totally different from Alzheimer's disease. The, the, 
pathology is completely different. There was a study that showed an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease in those who had uh, drinking water with higher amounts of aluminum. However, subsequent studies failed to show this association. And one thing that is so important to remember is that association does not equal causation. Just because an association between an exposure and a outcome are observed does not mean that the exposure caused the outcome. For example, I could easily do a study that showed that using an umbrella puts you at risk for drowning. Does anyone actually believe that using an umbrella causes drowning? No, people are more likely to be using an umbrella at the beach, being at the beach, by a huge body of water is a risk factor for drowning. You're more likely to be near the water and an accident happen. It doesn't mean that the umbrella caused you to drown. When we look at these epidemiologic studies that point out an association, you have to understand that association does not equal causation. But I will point out to you that there are studies that show no association with aluminum and Alzheimer's disease. There are some studies that show that there are increased amounts of aluminum in the brains of people who have Alzheimer's disease. However, that does not, again, prove causation. Uh, whether or not the aluminum got there secondary to the Alzheimer's disease brain pathology remains to be addressed. What about aluminum containing antiperspirants in breast cancer? This is something that you hear a lot of people point out, but there is no evidence that aluminum containing antiperspirants cause breast cancer or increase the risk of breast cancer. Aluminum has been detected in breast cancer tumors, but it's also been detected in normal breast tissue. Aluminum can accumulate in these areas, especially in the upper outer quadrant, because that's the area of the breast where the tissue is most dense. But it's not just aluminum that you can find there. You can find accumulation of various other metals and elements. So no one is out here fear-mongering sodium, but you can find sodium likewise detected in breast tissue of both breast cancers as well as normal breast tissue. You can find iron, you can find all sorts of things. Uh, it does not mean causation. Based on the research that we have, it doesn't appear as though aluminum is at all a trigger for breast cancer, but rather may accumulate in breast cancer tissue preferentially as do other metals and elements. When we look at the epidemiology, there is a retrospective study that looked at um, women and their self-reported uh, use of aluminum containing antiperspirants. And in that one study, there was an association between earlier onset of breast cancer and self-reported antiperspirant use. However, retrospective studies are limited by recall bias. Further studies that were case controlled did not show any association with early onset breast cancer and the use of aluminum containing antiperspirants. People who are going out of their way to avoid aluminum in say antiperspirants, personal care products, cooking utensils, which constitute a very, very small fraction of what would ever be absorbed into the body. Avoiding aluminum in antiperspirants, cooking utensils, and the like in otherwise healthy people is like saying, I'm going to avoid drinking water because I don't want to drown. Uh, drinking water is not only not a relevant route of exposure to cause harm to your lung, it's also um, you know, hard to go without drinking water. It's not reasonable. And it's, it's proven safe that you can drink water provided you don't have any problem with your swallowing mechanism. But people who have swallowing difficulties, they actually do have to be very careful when they're swallowing liquids so as to not aspirate. In many cases, things have to be added to their liquid, liquids to thicken them up so that they don't accidentally aspirate them into the lungs and cause lung problems. For the otherwise healthy person who doesn't have swallowing issues, there's no rhyme nor reason to avoid drinking water in an effort to avoid drowning. You don't restrict consumption of water as a, as a way to avoid drowning. Likewise, restricting use of aluminum in personal care products, foods, uh, utensils, aluminum foil, and things of this sort, uh, when your body is more than well equipped to handle it, what, what are you trying to avoid? There's no established risk that aluminum is going to cause Alzheimer's disease. There's no established risk that it's going to cause breast cancer, let alone you're, you're absorbing such little and you have good kidney function that can handle whatever small amounts are being absorbed. It's not going to accumulate in your body. Um, so going out of your way to avoid things like antiperspirants, it, it just doesn't 
It doesn't make sense. Take home points from this video. Aluminum is everywhere. It's ubiquitous in our environment. It's the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. You can't avoid it completely. People who need to uh, realize that they are at risk for aluminum related problems are namely those individuals who work in industries professions where they're exposed to a lot of aluminum dust and they're inhaling high, high amounts. Again, it's not the poison, it's the dose. In those occupations, they can be exposed to too high of a dose. It can cause lung problems and it can cause neurologic problems. Proper precautions need to be taken in those industries. The other scenario, are patients who have renal disease requiring dialysis. Their bodies don't handle other things, let alone aluminum particularly well. They are at risk for something called uh, encephalopathy, a brain disease related to too much aluminum because their bodies can't handle aluminum like otherwise healthy people can. And then the third situation is in the case of aluminum containing antiperspirants, they can be pretty irritating to the skin. Now that skin irritation, it's uncomfortable. It's not life threatening, however. Um, and, and so if you're somebody who finds that aluminum containing antiperspirants irritate your skin, trigger skin problems for you, then of course, avoid them. As a side note, I have a whole video on treatments for excessive sweating, things like Botox, iontophoresis, certain medications, like can be taken by mouth or applied to the skin. So there are alternatives out there to aluminum containing antiperspirants. If you are somebody who is struggling with excessive sweating and aluminum containing antiperspirants are too irritating for the skin. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful in addressing your concerns about the safety of aluminum in our day-to-day -day lives, personal care products, etc. On the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video all about the truth about mineral sunscreens. You definitely want to check that one out next. I debunk some popular misconceptions about mineral sunscreen. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.